Today, we're gonna review the Machwheel Basalt ST. This is a fat tire electric bike with a torque sensor and it has a power station. On top of that, the battery pack is fairly large at 19.6 amp hours, 48 volt system. So this bike has gotten a lot of hype online. So in today's video, we'll take it out and see if it lives up to the hype. Ugh, Hercules! And right away, we can see this is indeed a mock wheel. Take me. User manual, tools, charger. It's got the good stuff, the three amp charger. Tire pump, pedals. We'll look at the headlight in a moment. Typical 26 inch tall wheel with a four inch width and knobby tread. 180 millimeter rotors from Tektro. Fenders are plastic. Sounds a bit of a wrestle getting these heavy bikes out. And the most interesting thing about this bike is the battery. Basalt ST. Let's get it out. Comes with a relatively large battery pack listed as 19.6 amp hours, 924 watt hours of energy, and 47.2 volts. Interesting how the numbers are all off by like a small amount. I mean, I feel like most companies would just list this as a 20 amp hour, 48 volt battery. So the charge port is on this side of the battery. And if you get the inverter option, the power station option, that's where that plug is in on this side. I don't have the inverter. Costs a little bit extra to buy that. Check it out, here's the power station. There's the solar panel and the power station right there hook it up right there oh you got the fridge on there too nice so here's the inverter and it just plugs in right there and solar panel and all the connections whatever you need and for example there's a fridge on this one got some waters in there nice and you can even charge it up a little bit here to get the solar panels this one comes in green and it's the step through version. They also have the step over version and other colors available. The seat is branded mock wheel. It's wide, very wide. Even has a bit of a arch to it. Water bottle mount here. Tektro levers on the hydraulic brakes. Handlebars are mostly flat, a little bit of rise. And they do sweep back just a little bit. And you can adjust the height of the handlebars with this feature. You'll always know you're on a mock wheel with the mock wheel branded ergonomic hand grip. It's got seven speeds, Shimano shifter, and the thumb throttle is on the left. We'll play with this stuff and check out the screen in just a few. Please don't break. Oh, we good. Suspension is overlord. Drop that wheel. Don't bend it to finger. Dude, this is the best tool. There is no quick release lever on these. Check it out. <laughs> Fits like any size. It's an interesting pattern they have here. We get a Shimano tourney derailleur. Of course, seven gears. Shimano gears. Not sure what size the chain ring is. <gasps> Kicks and Headlight goes there. Oh, that's nice of them. They give you an extra set of brake pads. I have not seen that on any of these bikes yet. Suspension has adjustments and a little bit nicer feeling than most of these. And it is a mock wheel branded 750 watt motor. The tires have three millimeter hippo skin. All right, let's turn this thing on. You gotta hold that power button for a minute. Hello, color screen. Gives you speed, trip, pedal assist, time. Very nice display. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. All your stuff is just right here. There are no like tab over menus that I can see. Easy to operate the light switch. Bright headlight, pretty bright headlight. Turns on the tail light. Tail light is a brake light. So out of the box, it is a class two e-bike. Let's just smash the throttle, see what happens. Brings us up to 20. Not really clear on where battery life is, honestly. Pressing these buttons. Am I missing something? I mean, maybe that's battery life right there, these green bars. Right away, I can tell it's a little conservative on the power delivery. You can tell it just kind of it ramps up, eases on it. It'll make for a smoother ride and more range. Yes, according to the manual, that is the battery indicator. The charge port is right here and the inverter port right here. If you get the inverter, that's where you plug it in, right next to the charger. Check it out while I was sitting down here. Found a little button down here. Watch this. It's got a hidden horn. And I'm hoping we can increase the top speed. It says you press up, down, and light to get in the menus. Up, down, and light. There we go. Speed limiter. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Speed limit 21. Oh yeah, you can bump it up. We're gonna leave it on 21 to start, but we'll get in here and uh, take this thing up to 50 later, apparently. 
No, 60. 61 is the max we can go. Don't know what that means. We'll leave it on five. Voltage level. Oh yeah, it's a 48 volt battery. And then you can mess with this stuff too. Six. Writing modes. Okay, so you can change it. Intensity setting. Three. Oh, so it looks like you might be able to change the acceleration. We'll leave it on three, then get in here and mess with it later. And factory reset if you mess it up. All right, guys, let's take the mock wheel basalt ST out for a ride. Starting the straw, I'm gonna check our distance, although there is absolutely no percentage or voltage indicator for the battery life. It's just these bars. So we really won't be able to test the true range unless we run into zero. Since we do have the rear rack, I'm gonna be utilizing that for my tripod. And now we're gonna do the 20% hill grade test on the Basalt ST. On the stock settings, pedal assist five, throttle only. I weigh 200 pounds, ready, go. What kind of torque we working with? Wow, yep, it's, uh, it's doing it. From a stop on the default settings. Decent. I'm actually gonna go in here and change the intensity setting right away. We'll change it from three up to five, just for the hill test, then we'll put it back. Same test with the intensity on five, full throttle. Oh, wow, yeah, I can tell. It just gave me like power, like quicker off the line and definitely performing a little better climbing the hill. Regardless of the exact setting, this is a strong hill climbing bike, I can tell already. I'm gonna put that intensity back to three for now, so we're back on default settings. And as some of you know, I prefer these step through frames because they're just so easy to get on. Let's try some of the pedal assist settings. So on zero, no pedal assist at all. One, now we're working with a torque sensor here. So torque sensor, in my opinion, is better than a cadence sensor. It'll give you power based on how hard you're actually pressing on the pedals. Now, even though I'm not like pedaling this bike really hard at all it seems like the minimum it wants to give me even on pedal assist one is up to like 14 miles an hour brake levers feel good we gotta let them bed in though before we can give them a real test let's feel this out so it doesn't give you any indication as to how much power the bike's giving you. I don't see any way to tap through the menus to see how much power the bike's giving you. I'm gonna go ahead and bump the seat up a little bit, probably on like three. I'm 6'5", it can go up higher, but I wanna keep the camera angle pretty good. So pedal assist one, pretty gentle. I'll push a little harder, see if it gives me more power. I really just, I wish it would show me how much power it's giving me. Anyway, we'll bump it on to pedal assist two. Just kind of feeling this out. So pedal assist two, you can kind of feel the torque sensor working. Bump it on to three. Oh gosh, I forgot to put the kickstand up. Don't do that. Woo. <laughs> so really just feeling this torque sensor out. I'm gonna bump it on to pedal assist five so it'll be more pronounced. Yeah, so it definitely is a torque sensor because on pedal assist five, I can pedal like very lightly and it's still you know it's giving me power at about 13 miles an hour and it's not you know just like flooring it all out now if i was on a cadence sensor and i had it on pedal assist 5 it'd be boosting me up the top speed basically so let me put in a little bit more effort here and yeah i can feel the power like ramp on so those beginner power assist levels okay this thing goes faster than 20. <laughs> now technically as far as i understand a class 2 e-bike should um, cut you off at 20 miles an hour max but and yeah this thing's bringing me up to 24 25 26 27. one thing i'm noticing about this bike that's different than any other bike i've tried is these there's like a little bump sticking up here like you see that little bubble sticking up so it's kind of like something for your hand to sit on like i don't know a little extra uh, padding or something Maybe to help prevent your hand from slipping forward. And these ergonomic grips, they feel pretty good. I like them. They're a little more squishy than usual, which is nice. Torque sensor feels nice. This is like a really nice feeling fat tire e-bike. Now this bike does come at a premium. It's listed for 2,200 bucks normally. Right now while I'm making this video, it's on sale for right at two grand, which is an expensive e-bike, but this does have the torque sensor. And also it does have that massive battery. You know, this torque sensor kind of seems to be like a little like jumpy. Like it's like kicking on and off a little bit when I'm on these lower pedal assist modes. Like you kind of got to be putting some decent like pedal into it for it to stay working. All right, we'll go ahead and get on into traffic. 
So seven gears on this bike. I'm going 25 according to this. We'll check the actual accuracy of that in just a moment. It's showing 20, 30 miles an hour. Wow, 31, 32. I feel like I might be reading a little bit high, honestly, but we're moving pretty quick regardless. It's saying 31.1. This thing's freaking cooking, man. I'm surprised that the gears, like my legs can keep up with the gears because it only has seven gears. I didn't sorb on over here just a bit. We should be able to stick with traffic here a bit today on this bike. Downshift, downshift. We gotta break out the GPS in a second. So this big battery should be able to run higher speeds for a while. If you don't have a big battery, you'll burn out your battery pretty quick on a big bike like this going 25, 30 miles an hour. What do you guys think of the color of this one, the green? I, I kind of like it. It's like pretty subtle, like nature-y. You could blend in in the outdoors. Gonna merge on over here. Whew. Another thing I've noticed about it is the thumb throttle is a little different than we typically see like the standard thumb throttle on like all these bikes. This one's like a little bit nicer. All right, dudes, we're gonna do two acceleration tests. We'll do it on the standard settings first and then we'll bump up the intensity. So zero to 20 acceleration, throttle only, ready, go. Gives you power right away. And 19, 20. Cuts you off at 20. Decent acceleration, really. Yeah, I guess the speedometer seems to be correct at 20. We'll check it at a higher speed in a moment. All right, cranking the intensity up to five. Ready, go. Definitely feel it kick on right away. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So definitely gives you a little more zip off the line. And it doesn't feel like too like jerky really either. The display is good. Um, I can read it through my polarized shade. Sometimes displays will give you a little bit of trouble. This intensity five makes a, a big difference really. I might bump it back down, but I don't know, man. Now that I'm on intensity five, like this thing just feels so much more beast mode. Now I am gonna go through that battery a lot quicker. Try out the suspension a little bit. So it rotates about half the length of this thing through all the settings. We're gonna leave it on the softest one because we're not like doing any jumps or anything. So I really like that you can get in there and change that intensity setting because now, now when it's on intensity five, like when I start pedaling, like you can feel that boost kick in like right away. Torque sensor has a very, very small lag on it. Not pedaling, pedaling, power. Not pedaling pedaling power. <laughs> so it's a uh, pretty much instant delivery as soon as you start pedaling. So riding this bike on pedal assist five on intensity five, even though I feel like I'm giving it like a consistent like pedaling cadence, the power delivery on this bike is actually kind of twitchy on this mode. I'm going to switch it back to the default settings here in a minute, but honestly, I don't feel like this is the greatest torque sensor I've tried. Usually like it's very intuitive like how you're pedaling it'll give you a consistent power level output now maybe because this motor is like stronger it feels just like a little bit more jumpy but even though you know like i said i'm pedaling like consistent the power level seems to be kind of twitchy it is a party out here today man all right we're gonna change the intensity back to three and also while we're in here we're gonna change the speed limit let's put it at 40. All right, those settings should be locked in. Let's go ahead and get on out here. This bike honestly feels better on intensity three than five. And now, now it feels like it's giving me power in like a more like linear uh, way. This is much better. Let's see if the throttle will work over 20 miles an hour now that I bump this speed up. Throttle only. We're gonna have to slow it down. There's people blocking the road. Let's see if it goes beyond 20 now. Yeah, 22. 23. So if you want to make this thing a speed demon, you can unlock those speeds. This isn't a good place to really do that. I think that these bubbly, cushy grips have kind of grown on me a little bit. I don't know if they're like really necessarily better than a normal grip, but I'm enjoying them. I like them. It does, it really, it feels like it prevents your hands from like sliding forward. Even still, like, I feel like the 
torque sensor is like twitchy at slow speeds on pedal assist five. Running up this hill. Give me the power, give me the power. This is a challenge. Give me the torque, man. No, oh, come on. I mean, that's a challenge for any bike, really. We'll take it out there in a little bit. So for this price, I know you can get full suspension bikes or maybe just a little bit more this one riding off-road. Since you are sitting back on the seat on this cruiser style bike, um, it's not particularly supple. I mean, it does have the fat tires, so it's always going to be better having fat tires than not fat tires riding off-road. But if you want the ultimate cushiness, you might want a full suspension. Of course, full suspension does add weight, and these fat tire bikes are not heavy. I forget the exact weight on this one. I'll throw it up on the screen. I'd say right around 70 pounds, maybe 75. It does have the big 20 amp hour battery, so it'll be a little bit more heavy than your standard fat tire e-bike. But that bigger battery will give us more range, especially with the torque sensor. Although I have not fully made up my mind on if I like the torque sensor or not. This dude's over here scalping out stealing bikes. I've seen him stealing bikes before. That might actually be his bike right there. He already stole from somebody else. Oh yeah, he's definitely looking to take one. Let's see what he does. So I was just kind of watching him for a moment to see if he was going to actually steal the bike before I tried to stop him. I didn't know if it was going to actually be a successful theft attempt. Over here to the right is the actual owners of the bike. And it looks like to me he's just trying to remove the quick release lever on the front wheel. And then he was going to leave the lock on the wheel and just take the frame of the bike. So at this point, I wasn't exactly sure what to do, but I wasn't going to let him walk off the bike. Hey, hey! No! Hey. And these girls were not afraid of him at all. I didn't have to do a thing. The timing worked out perfectly. Uh, that dude definitely steals bikes. I've seen him steal them before. What happened, man? Yeah. Go try and steal my bike. <laughs> <laughs> I think he took his bag. He took his bike. Look, he stole from him. Yeah, see, he took his bike. Oh, they caught him. Let him be. No, no, no. Let him be. You gotta put it through the frame. Yeah, I did it around this frame and this one, so I thought there was no way he was gonna get this off, right? I don't know, he was trying to pick it. He was gonna take the wheel off, and then you could just lift that whole frame up right over. Oh, no yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. You gotta put it through the frame. Yeah, that was dumb. I know better, I just live in New York. I know. <laughs> Good luck out here. Dude, summer is here in Los Angeles, man. It's packed out here today. We're gonna get out there and try this thing on the sand. So this torque sensor, you know, it's pretty good as long as you're putting in like a decent amount of power, but just on like the low end when you're just like barely pedaling, it kind of like cuts in and out a little bit. It's a little bit annoying. All right, I better crank this thing up to pedal assist five. And give it a go. All right. Yeah, these big uh, 26 inch tires are great for uh, navigating through the sand. Let's just get out here and ride amongst the people today a bit before we get down to the actual water. Yeah, this thing does, it has really good torque. Like this is one of the better performing uh, torquey bikes that I've tried. It's got the fenders, so it'll keep sand from picking up on you. Try a little bit of grass riding. It's fine. I, in my opinion, if you're gonna be doing like a lot of off-roading, you're gonna wanna do Probably full suspension. Oh, I didn't tighten the bars down all the way. That was almost bad. What happened there? They just rotated. Banged my ankle a little bit. Man, I thought I had those tightened down. Man, that hurt a little bit. Very unusual. Dude, these little things right here that I was saying help prevent your hands from slipping forward they might have just saved me from going over the handlebars maybe i can try and rotate them back oh shoot you know what happened man is this stupid freaking zoom thing like that's what happened the, the bars didn't rotate on there the adjustable stem that can like rotate up and down oh man so you got to be really careful about that. You got to get that thing tightened down all the way. 
I'm just gonna have to be careful riding for the rest of the day because I don't have the wrench here to tighten it back. Whew, got lucky there, man. It's a pretty good reminder to remember everything's tightened down yeah. before you get out on your bike. Let's try this hill now. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's like a pretty solid performing torquey bike. I'm just pedaling just a little bit, doing 11 miles an hour. I guess I'll keep on keeping on, just be a little more careful about not jumping any curbs or doing anything crazy out here. Like the craziness these folks do over here. <laughs> keep your eyes on the road, bro. I'm talking to myself. We're gonna go ahead and exit the beach area. Pick it up the California incline, see what kind of speed it can do. Bro, we have a police officer out here driving on the bike path. I have not seen that. It's a wild day out here in Santa Monica today. Bringing us right up the loop-de-loop -loop as expected, no problem. And we're hitting 16, 17, 20. And it tops out at about 20, actually. Going up the California incline. There's where we came from down there. Give it one quick brake test here from 20. That was not 20. <laughs> Give it one quick brake test here from 20. That's over 20. These brakes are great. So one thing that's a little bit annoying about this bike is it still shows full battery after 10.3 miles. There's no like real indicator to see exactly where you are. Uh, you don't really need to know where you are like that precisely. But as somebody who's reviewing bikes, I would like to know a little more precise measurement. So let's head on home and I'll leave you with my final thoughts. Hey, this thing can hit. 30, throttle only right now. These guys are getting crazy out here on these bikes. All right guys, quick little final thoughts and final range on the Machwheel Basalt ST. So today we did just short of 19 miles and I really don't know what to tell you on battery life because this thing just doesn't really show you a good range update. I mean, it's kind of reading like mostly full, but there's no percentage and no voltage readout. But I mean, it does have a torque sensor and it does have the massive 20 amp hour battery, we'll call it, even though it's listed as 19 and change. So I mean, with the torque sensor and the big battery, you're gonna get pretty much like the best range you can from an electric bike. Obviously the weight and these big tires are gonna take away from your range, but they give you a little bit more comfort, a little more stability and confidence riding over like bumps and imperfections in the road. So to comment on the torque sensor, I feel like the torque sensor on this bike is definitely better than a cadence sensor. Uh, my one little gripe with the torque sensor on this bike, it feels like when you're pushing not like that hard on the pedals, the sensitivity is just not like excellent. Like you need to be putting, I don't know, like five pounds of force roughly say, in order for that uh, torque sensor to kick in. But then, you know, once you're pedaling with like about five pounds of force or more, you know, up to like heavier pedal assist and you're applying more force, then the torque sensor starts to feel a lot more intuitive and gives you better feedback. I did have that little hiccup here with this uh, thing kind of dropping down on me when I was doing some off-roading. That was probably my own fault, not tightening it down enough. So I would highly recommend you make sure that it's tightened down all the way if you get the spike. The brakes are great. I love these Tektro brakes. They have really nice feedback. They're hydraulic big 180 millimeter rotors, Tektro calipers, and they do give you an extra set of brake pads as well. One little thing I didn't comment on, but I kept noticing was this looks kind of cool to me. It's not typical on bikes. It's got that horn and the settings are easy to access and uh, tinker with. It's a good hill climber, has good torque. It's a fast bike. I saw this thing at 30 miles an hour, even though it is listed as a class two, which I mean, technically, that shouldn't help you beyond 20 miles an hour period for my understanding and then really like one of the big selling points obviously is that like inverter power station uh connectivity if you want to use that it's, it's an option for you personally i probably would never make use of that but if you're going to be doing like extended rides and doing camping and going out in the woods and stuff I can see the appeal. And they normally sell this bike for 2,200 bucks, which is a lot of money to ask. It is on sale right now. I do have a link below the video in the description box if you wanna see the current pricing. And of course, if you did buy through that link, it would help support my reviews here at Tail Happy TV. So all around, you know, I think it's a good bike. I like it. I guess really the big question is, is this bike worth the price that they're asking? But that is not a question for me to answer. That's for you to answer. So if you wanna grab one, click that link. If not, you can watch this video next. Thanks for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up. Drop a comment. Catch you next time.